Hello everyone, welcome back to Analog Snippets. If you are looking at a simplified DC to DC converter circuit for the first time, you might think, I know this circuit. This is an LC tank. This might be some sort of oscillator. And that would be obviously wrong. You even might say power supplies are opposite of oscillators. One generates endlessly changing voltage, while other is supposed to generate ever constant voltage. When you look at an LC circuit and think of an oscillator, that is a mental model. And obviously, this mental model doesn't work for DC to DC converters. So in this video, I'm going to give you three mental models, which are valid for DC to DC converters. So let's begin. Let's consider a pulse strain switching between zero and a supply. Let's also assume that this pulse strain has a constant duty. What is the average voltage of this pulse strain? The average voltage here is easy to calculate. It's simply high voltage multiplied by T on time divided by total period. And this second factor you will recognize is simply your duty. So that was simple enough. Now, how do you get this average voltage given this pulse strain? And that is also simple. You just low pass filter it. And when I say low pass filter, another mental model might jump in. An RC circuit. And that works. It will give you the average voltage. The only condition you need to ensure is that the RC time constant of this low pass filter is much larger than the period of your pulse strain. This is another way of saying that the cutoff frequency of your low pass filter is much smaller than your pulse frequency. And this in fact is a perfectly valid way to approach the problem unless high powers are involved. And we all know that DC to DC converters are about high powers. So what goes wrong at high powers? The problem is that the R here is a dissipative element. And so a lot of power is lost in this register. So what can we do? Replace this R with a lossless element, an inductor. Now, you might remember that the transfer characteristic of this circuit is also low pass. Even better, it is a second order low pass. But what about all that stuff that I'll see tank forms an oscillator? Well, switching comes to rescue here. When a switch is added to an element, it might change the behavior of that element. A well-known example is a switched capacitor circuit. When we combine a capacitor with some switches, it's no more a capacitor. It starts behaving as a resistor. The trick here is that the switching must be much faster than the inherent RC time constant. And that is the trick here too. If you have a sufficiently fast pulse strain at the input, this LC will look like a low pass filter. And it is lossless. So let's sum this all together. You can think of an inductive switching converter as a lossless low pass filter, which filters some sort of incoming pulse strain to generate a constant output voltage. This model works particularly well for one particular type of DC to DC converters, the buck converters. Output of a buck converter is always lower than the input supply voltage. Even better, this mental model also works for class T amplifiers. This simple mental model includes some very important features of switching converters. First important feature is this pulse strain itself. In switching converter universe, this pulse strain is known as PWM signal, which stands for pulse width modulated. You will encounter PWM signal fairly regularly in switching converters. In fact, frequency of this signal is your switching frequency, which is an important parameter of any switching converter. Second important factor is that this switching frequency is much higher than LC time constant. It may be 10 times higher or even more. A third obvious point is that inductors and capacitors are integral part of your switching converters. Right, so this model works for bulk where output voltage is less than input voltage. But how do you explain other converters like boost, where output voltage is higher than input voltage? For that, we turn to our second mental model. There are two ways to charge a capacitor. One is using a voltage source, other is using a current source. The first way is a lossy charging. That means some energy is lost while charging this capacitor. And that is even with an ideal zero ohm switch. In fact, half of the supplied energy is lost and only half is stored in this capacitor. Now, why that happens is an interesting topic in itself, 
but we will not talk about it here. The other mechanism is a lossless mechanism. That is, given you have a zero ohm resistor here. In fact, this is not unique to capacitors. Even inductors have lossy and lossless charging. But condition here is exact opposite. And that means charging an inductor with a current source is lossy, but with a voltage source is lossless. Now, coming back to capacitors. If only we could design a current source which takes energy from an input supply and dumps it onto a capacitor, we would be able to transfer energy from a voltage source to a capacitor in a lossless manner. And by having different value of currents, we can generate any voltage across this capacitor. And that is exactly what an inductive switching converter does. So here is our second mental model. An inductive switching converter can be thought of as a controlled current source charging a capacitor. Notice that in this form, it looks pretty similar to an LDO. But in place of a controlled current source, we have a controlled resistor. In fact, this lossy resistor is what makes the LDO so inefficient. Okay, back to switching converters. So, how to realize this magic current source? We know that a charge capacitor acts like a voltage source. At least for the small durations and small load currents. Similarly, a charge inductor looks like a current source. By the way, I keep referring to capacitor when talking about inductors because capacitors are easier to understand. So how do we charge an inductor? By connecting it to a voltage source. If we connect an inductor to a DC voltage source, the current will start ramping up into the inductor. And energy will be stored in a magnetic field. And remember, this is a lossless charging. So in nutshell, we first losslessly store energy on an inductor and then losslessly transfer this energy onto a capacitor. I keep saying losslessly, but keep in mind that this is a zero ohm switch case. In reality, there will be some losses. So here we have it. Here these boxes indicate switches. We first have energy stored onto an inductor and then we connect this charge inductor to capacitor. And it is switches which determine what kind of converter it would become. So this mental model works for a lot of switching converters. And it also highlights some important points about the switching converters. Here we can clearly see that there are two phases in switching converters. The phase when we charge the inductor is known as magnetizing phase. And the second phase when it is connected to a capacitor is known as demagnetizing phase. This mental model also shows that switches are an important part of switching converter design. And it also shows why low resistance switches are so important for switching converters. Okay, let's now move to our third and final mental model. We can think of a DC to DC converter as a DC transformer. Now, DC transformer is an oxymoron because a real transformer doesn't work with DC voltages. In fact, that was one of the main reasons why AC was preferred over DC for electric grids. But we are making a mental model here. And for that purpose, it works rather well. So let's recall what a transformer is. A transformer is used to either increase or decrease the input voltage. It has two tightly coupled coils which have a turn ratio of 1 is to n. And output voltage is simply n times the input voltage. For an ideal transformer, the input and output powers are same. So from this equation, the input and output currents are also related by the same factor n. Now, a DC to DC converter also does many of the similar things, but on a DC voltage. So these relations are also valid for DC to DC converters. And it gets better. By its very nature, switching converters don't have continuous time behavior. So it is difficult to do loop analysis. But a transformer is a linear element. So you can build a linear model of DC to DC converter using the ideal transformer. And you can perform your stability or noise analysis on that linear model. You can also do circuit manipulations using transformers characteristics. For example, let's consider a boost converter. And let's say we want to find out the effect of inductor's parasitic series resistance on the efficiency. So let's build the DC transformer model. Circuit under blue box is ideal transformer. And this line at the center means that it is a DC transformer. 
the turns ratio is d dash over 1 where d dash is just 1 minus d. Now using the impedance transformation property of a transformer, we can push the R, L and V in towards the output side. So now it becomes simple register divider circuit and we can solve it for V out. Now probably you don't understand the details and it may require another video to clarify it. But the message I want to convey here is that it is a very powerful tool to analyze the DC-DC converter. And it's a handy mental model. And that is all I wanted to talk about in this video. So post your comment below and thanks for watching.